Hi, everyone. This is a, an overview of the Tao Te Ching, chapters 13, 14, and 15. And the translation on the screen is uh, Paul Lin's translation with Wang Bi's commentary. Let's start with chapter 13. Favor and disgrace are likely to cause fear. Highly respect great trouble as one respects his own body. The next two stanzas unpack these first two lines. What is meant by favor and disgrace are likely to cause fear? Favor is for the inferior. Obtaining it, one will fear it. Losing it, one will fear it. This means that favor and disgrace are likely to cause fear. And so the idea here I take is to not worry too much about what other people think about you. The Stephen Mitchell version says, whether you go up the ladder or down it, your position is shaky. So as long as you stay on your own two feet, you will stick to the center. and won't be affected by what other people think of you. What is meant by highly respecting great trouble as one respects his own body? I have great trouble because I have a body. When I no longer have a body, how can I have trouble? So recognizing that your body is part of nature and when you die, your body will go back to the earth, that should give you some kind of peace. Therefore, one who respects himself for the world can be lodged with it. In other words, recognizing yourself as part of the world or as nature and you're comfortable wherever you find yourself. One who loves himself for the world can be entrusted with it. So if you take care of yourself, as one version says, take care of yourself, then you can take care of all things. That's the Stephen Mitchell version, which I interpret to be, if you can take care of yourself, then maybe you're the type of material, uh, that, you, that you're a leadership material that you can take care of others. Chapter 14. Looked at, it cannot be seen. It is called colorless or invisible. Listened to, it cannot be heard. It is called soundless or inaudible. Grasped, it cannot be obtained. It is called formless. So we're talking about the same thing we were talking about in chapter one, something that is ineffable. You cannot talk about this thing, and that is the Tao. So we're talking about ultimate reality or the way of nature. He continues. These three cannot be investigated further, so they merge together to make one. The upper part is not bright, the lower part is not dark, and I take this to be that it doesn't have parts, it's not differentiated. So subtle it cannot be named, but returns to nothingness. This is called shape without shape, image without image. This is called indistinct. Confronting it, one cannot see the head, following it, one cannot see the back. In other words, it's like nothing else in nature. It is the thing that um, is throughout all nature. It is the source of all nature. It is ultimate reality. And our understanding it is not understanding some concept or some part of it, but is actually having some sort of awareness of it, some direct uh, relational awareness of it, or we could say mystical understanding of it. In the last two lines, he talks more about this. Grasp the ancient Tao to manage present present existence. So you've got to grasp it even though it cannot be obtained, as it says earlier in the chapter. You, you need to understand it if you want to manage present existence. I take that to mean navigating your way through your own life, or we could take it in terms of managing the states of affairs of, of your society if you want to be a good leader. It says, thus we may know the beginning of the ancient. So even though the Tao is centuries thousands of years old, then we can still know it because it's here with us today. Chapter 15. The ancients who made themselves the best were subtle and penetrating and deep beyond knowing. Because they were beyond knowing, we can only try to describe them. So we're talking about these sages, these people of wisdom and virtue. What are they like? And he continues to describe their characters. He says, first, they're cautious as if crossing the river in winter. This seems obvious and clear. A, a wise person is one who is cautious, not too cautious, but cautious enough to not take unnecessary risks. Related to that is this next one, circumspect, as if afraid of the neighbors on four sides. So circum, circumspect means not taking any unnecessary risks, right? Um, being careful, so very similar to cautious. The next one is dignified, as if a guest. Dignified, another translation 
says courteous, um, but we can we would think that a leader would be uh, someone who is dignified. Expansive as melting ice. Now this one is a bit unusual for us for our ears. I think expansive means spreading like water as the block of ice melts. It's it spreads out across the surface and and penetrates. You might think of it as one's influence, one's a leader's influence on those around them that uh, is illustrated in this melting ice, this spreading expanse of water. Next is unspoiled as unhewn wood, which means just a block of wood that hasn't been carved yet. So this leader is unspoiled, pure, righteous, broad as a valley. So here again is the uh, valley or, or imagery of emptiness. A valley is where life resides, right? In fact, if we keep to the to the water uh, imagery, the valley is where the water collects. You get the value of a valley is the lake, the holding of, of, of water, where it becomes useful. Next, it's opaque as turbid pud puddles. Stephen Mitchell's version says, clear as a glass of water, which seems opposite from the word opaque. Uh, but the remaining lines might make this clear for us. The, the, the wise sage is someone who can rest patiently in chaotic circumstances and clarity comes as the water settles. So I'm not sure if opaque here is the best term to describe this for our ears, but we get the sense that a patient uh, leader is the wise leader who can see through the chaos and still has peace. These lines should make that clear. Who can calm the turbid and clear it gradually? Who can stir the inert? and bring it gradually to life. One who keeps this Tao does not wish to be filled, and because he is not filled, he can be sheltered and beyond renewal. So again, emptiness is an important strength of the master, and here this emphasizes this point.